Hello friends, welcome to another video from Education Center and today I am going to be teaching you about square roots and cube roots. Now, if you already don't know what these are, I recommend you to watch my other video about exponents so that you have a better understanding on how to solve these. Before we start, please make sure to like and subscribe for more awesome content from Education Center. Our learning targets today are going to be taking a short review of exponents, learning about square and cube roots, and solving them with ease. Let's take a short review of exponents. An exponent is a number that tells you how many times you need to multiply the base number by itself. If the exponent is 2, then we can call it a squaring a number. If it's 3, then we can call it cubing a number. Let's look at some examples. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. This is true because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Since the exponent is 3, we have to multiply the base number 2 by itself 3 times. Negative 3 to the power of 2 is 9. Now, if you don't notice, a negative num number times a negative number is a positive number. So, if, when we look at this, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Okay, let's move on. Now, let's look at something we would want to learn today. The opposite of squaring a number is finding the square root of it. So that's how this works. The square of 2 is 4. 2 squared is 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of, of 4 is 2. Now why is this true? This is true because if you square the number, and if you square the number as the answer, then you will get the number inside the square root. So, if you square 2, you will get 4. That's why it's, the square root of 4 is 2. Let's try this out. So, I gave you these two problems to solve by yourself. Please pause the video and try to figure these out yourself. Okay, now that you've, you've hopefully paused the video and tried to figure out these two problems by yourself, we'll go through them together. So, first let's go to what is the square root of 16? Now to figure this out, the answer of this squared will be 16. So what number squared would be 16? That would be in a number times itself twice. If you haven't figured that out, it is 4 since 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, let's go on to our next problem. What is 25? Then the, what is the square root of 25? So, if we figured, if we look at the last problem, the answer of this will, squared will be the answer of 25. So, what number squared will be 25? Okay, let's reveal the answer. It's 5 since 5 squared is 25. 5 times 5 is 25. Okay, let's look at this positive square root chart that I made myself. So, let's see here. This is true because if you must square 1, you will get 1. If you square 2, you will get 4. If you can square 3, you will get 9, and so on. So, this chart was for only for reference, and you can take this and jot it down in a notebook that you have nearby. Now let's look at the negative square roots. Now remember, a negative number times a negative number is a positive number, which is why the, in the number inside the square root is still positive while the answer is negative. <coughs> Okay, now let's look at cube roots. The opposite of cubing a number is finding the cube root. Okay, now let's look at some examples that I put down here. The cube of 3 is 27. This is true because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. The exponent here 
is 3, which is why we have to multiply 3 three times. 3 times 3 is 9, and then times 3 is 27. The cube root of 27 is 3. Well, just as we thought, of, as, just as we think, squaring the number will be the number inside the square root. Cubing the number will equal the number inside the cube root. To identify that as a cube root, we just look that the at the three at the hanging over here. So if there's no three or no number here, then we can call it a square root. If there's a three over here, it's cube root. Okay, let's look at the positive cube root chart. I put this first because these are a lot harder. Okay, now this is true because 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, and so on. So you can also jot this down in your notebook. The cube roots of negatives. Now you might be wondering why I put a negative number here first. Okay, I put this here. Uh, I put this here v two because you, if you don't notice two, then a negative number times a positive number is a negative number. So if you cube with negative one, negative one times negative one is positive one, but then positive one times negative one is negative one, which is why we have a negative number inside the cube root two. So that means this is true for all of these. And you see these numbers are getting pretty big, so yeah. <clears throat> okay, let's try these out. Now I've got two problems over here for you to figure out. Okay, pause the video and I'll see you once you solve it. Okay, now that you've hopefully paused the video and tried solving these two problems, not looking at the chart. I'm hope. Okay, so let's figure these out ourselves. Okay, so first we've got the cube root of 8. So the answer of this, if we cubed it, it would be 8. So what answer cubed will be 8? If you haven't figured this out already, it is going to be 2 since 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, now let's look at this problem. Mm, what is the cube root of negative 64? Now, if you remember this, uh, if there's a negative number inside, then the, if, then the answer would also be a negative number. This is only true for cube roots. And square roots, it's not true. <coughs> So, let's see, what number times, and if times multiply by itself three times would be equal to negative 64, and remember it's negative, okay, now that if you haven't figured that out, if you, let's have a drum roll, okay, the answer is negative 4, since negative 4 cubed is 64. Actually, negative 64. Sorry for the error over here. Now, let's have these exercises here. Okay, so these are exercises I put out for you. For you to solve uh, out of this video. And, and these are... So, you can think of these as resources. We're not going, uh, at going through these together. But I hope this will be good for extra practice. So you can pause the video and jot these down in your notebook so that you can um, you can solve these for later use. But I am moving on now, okay? Remember, the cube roots are having a 3 and the, and the square roots have no 3. Okay, here are... Some algebra problems. Now, if you don't know basic algebra, I'm going. I'm going to go through these with you. So don't consider these as re extra practice because we are going through these. Okay, so jot these down in your notebook. 
and and um I'll have the since these are tricky I have a step by step explanation for us. Okay. See you in a bit. <coughs> okay. Now that you've probably solved them, let's solo. Okay, let's look at the first problem. X squared equals four. Solve for x. Okay. So first what we're going so if you don't know basic algebra, we want to the x to be by itself if we want to solve it. So how do we get this by itself? Easy. The power of square roots. Okay. So we use a square root to remove this from this power, the square, and then we get the x by itself. So just note this down. If you square a, a, if you use the square root on a square, it immediately eliminates the square. So we have the x by itself now. And if you don't know what the square root of four is, well. You should probably know that by now. But x equals 2. Easy for you enough, right? No problem. Well, let's go on. Okay, let's see this. x cubed equals 27. Solve for x. Okay, now if you're guessing, if you're guessing that we we're using cube roots here, correct. So we're going to use cube roots to eliminate the cube, just like we use square roots to eliminate the cube. No, the square. Okay, so we got the x here, and we need to get it by itself, so we're going to use the cube root here. Cool, so we've, probably, we've used 27 in uh, the cube root of 27 in an earlier example, so you should probably know what the cube root of this is. And that is going to be x equals 3. Okay. Now let's move on to something harder. Okay. x squared plus 5 equals 21. Solve for x. Okay. So here we don't only have a square we need to eliminate to get x by itself, but we also have a positive 5. A 5 that we're adding to the x. Okay. So... So let's do this. Don't worry if you don't know how to solve this. I'll go explain this. Hopefully you also learn a bit of algebra in this video. Okay, so x squared plus 5 minus 5 equals 21 minus 5. So here, what is going on here? So since we have a, pl a plus 5, we need to eliminate the plus 5 first. So since we're adding a 5 to... to um, to eliminate this, we'll have to zero it out with a minus 5, or a negative 5, you can say. So, since there's a plus sign in front of the 5, this is positive. And then we will do plot positive 5 minus 5 to zero it out. But remember, whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. And that is very true in algebra. Okay, so we also, since we did, since we have uh, a... My, uh, if we, if, since we subtracted 5 here, we also have to subtract 5 from the 21. So, now that we have a 16 on the side, and, well, we zeroed out the 5 here. Now, since there's a square here, we have to use the power of square roots again to eliminate the square. And since we know that 16 is also a square number, which is technically enough, which just means a number that can be, um... A number that can be mo that can be uh evenly divided by a square root. Yeah. Okay. So if you haven't figured this out yet, well, I'll just reveal the answer. And x equals four. Simple enough, right? So, well, I've got one more problem, and hopefully you solve it. Okay. So x cubed minus fourteen equals fifty. Solve for x. <clears throat> okay, let's look at this. So, x cubed minus 14 plus 14 equals 50 plus 14. So, since there's a, uh, there's a minus sign in front of the 14, this 14 is negative. And since we zero this out, we have to add 14 to this. And to zero it out. And since we added 14 on this side, we have to add 14 on this side too. 
So now we have the x x cubed equals 64. Now 64 is a cube number, which well me just means a number that can be divided e uh, divided evenly into a whole number by a cube root. And since we know that the, that using a cube root on a cube number eliminates the cube, the cube, no, the cube, then that just means that x is by itself. But what is the cube root of 64? Well, if you don't know that already, it is 4. x equals 4. Congratulations on solving all the four problems. And... I am glad to certify that you now know about square and cube roots. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned for more awesome videos from Education Center. Be on out.